Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Jacqueline and today we're talking about Gilmore Girls inspired interior ideas for your home. Now that it's colder and the leaves are falling off the trees, maybe you've been staying inside all weekend binge watching Gilmore Girls with a cup of tea or coffee and let me assure you, you're not alone. As it's fall and I've been doing this cozy autumn series on the channel, I thought what better video to do for fall than a Gilmore Girls themed one. And I wanted to talk a bit about the set design on Gilmore Girls, but more importantly, how you can step-by-step -step decorate your home like it's part of Gilmore Girls. But, but don't worry, we're not gonna make it look like this. So if you're interested, let's jump in. Maybe you're a subscriber who's never even watched an episode of Gilmore Girls in their life, but if you have, then just skip to the next chapter by clicking on the timestamp in the comments. However, if you're sitting there thinking, what is Gilmore Girls, then basically Gilmore Girls was a comedy drama TV show that ran from the year 2000 to 2007, and it centers around single mother, Lorelai Gilmore, and her teenage daughter, Rory, as well as Rory's grandmother, Emily Gilmore, thus forming the Gilmore Girls. But along the way, we meet Rory's grandfather, different boyfriends, and all of the quirky townspeople in their hometown, Stars Hollow, Connecticut. But why is Gilmore Girls popular with people every fall? Well, it aired in October and a lot of the first season, or just any season in general really of this show, always features an autumn setting in Stars Hollow. And the annual autumn festival does add to the ambiance. There's just something about the series that's so cozy and comforting. And for me, that's why I watch it again and again. Definitely for the fall vibes, but also for the nostalgia of the early 2000s, which is what I'm trying to help you achieve in your home. So autumn really is part of the Gilmore Girls makeup, and that's why everyone re-watches it during the fall. Gilmore Girls is set in various locations across Connecticut, but of course, the town of Stars Hollow is a character in itself, really. And unfortunately, it's not a real town, it's a set on the Warner Brothers lot in Burbank, California. Which, fun fact, is where they actually filmed the Friends fountain sequence too. Although it is a film set, the town is actually modelled after all the small, charming towns you find in New England, such as Washington, New Milford, Bantam and Litchfield, which inspired the creators of the show. However, a place that I feel is very reminiscent of the Independence Inn or even the Dragonfly is the Mayflower Inn located in Washington, Connecticut. It's actually where Gilmore Girls creator and director Amy Sherman Palladino stayed and apparently the town's beauty, warmth and camaraderie appealed to her a lot and she decided to recreate that in her first script of the show. Architecturally, the set was designed based on classic New England buildings, hence why a lot of the homes have timber cladding on the exterior, and why the Stars Hollow House of Worship is very similar to the white steeple churches in the region. A key location is, of course, Lorelei and Rory's house. Lorelei's house is a Victorian-style home with a porch that wraps around the front of the house, sawn balusters and spandrels, quintessential of a Victorian home. However, remember that this is a set and not a real home, which is why it's more modernized than a real Victorian home built in the 1800s in Connecticut. Both an iconic and adorable home that stands out in its signature blue coat of paint. Some of my favourite architectural features are the dragonfly fireplace and the stained glass windows there too. And all of the traditional arched doorways in Lorelei's house. Of course, they were probably installed for practical filming throughout the space so that the crew can move easily from room to room rather than a design choice, but still, I think that they really add to the architecture. I think that the set designers created the perfect atmosphere to represent each character's personality. Hence why Lorelei's house is warm, cosy, inviting, and cluttered or messy at times. 
Whilst in Emily and Richard's house, everything is symmetrical and strategically placed, prim and proper, and some may say the colours appear cold. Of course, apart from when Emily redecorated the pool house in season six, and there were lots of fun pops of colour, and she made it more into an island style with a bubblegum pop edge, a huge change from her normal grandiose interior style. So it's these small design decisions that the directors, writers and production designers have created to really make us feel as an audience and in turn it develops the character. Now the set design of the show, I would say, always had bold punchy colours and I assume that was to make each location in Stars Hollow memorable. Lorelai's house has an off-white or even yellow tint which we see in the revival changes to a pale green. Luke's diner was teal. Suki's house was Vermilion, and the Dragonfly Inn was a mixture of crazy patterns and colours. Each character's location has a distinctive colour choice which helps us, the viewer, distinguish between them. Everything is bright and because of this, the set was brought to life by the colour palette. Before we look at Gilmore Girls decor, let's look at some textiles and patterns that can bring your space to life. Now, I feel like we can't ignore the use of crazy patterns and clashing textures in the show, which I feel is quite nostalgic because lots of 90s and noughties home interiors had lots of those bold clashing textures, right? I specifically remember growing up with a sage green carpet, velvet furniture and curtains and bedding that looked something like this. And for the late 90s, early 2000s, I think that Lorelai's house was actually relatively mild. It was of course painted in a magnolia yellow tone, but later in the series, that changed to a yellow wallpaper instead. Which is something else we just cannot ignore, the amount of wallpaper used on this show. From the Dragonfly Inn to the Gilmore Girls house, wallpaper is never in short supply. So if you want to replicate this look, make sure to look for busy wallpapers. Another textile I've always loved was the cafe curtains at Luke's Diner, which to me is another way the production designers try to make the space feel less like a hardware store and more like a diner by using a quintessential cafe item. To copy the look, plaid design cafe curtains would instantly make your kitchen feel as though you're a regular customer. My last textile I want to mention that definitely gives that Gilmore Girls style are patterned rugs. It doesn't really matter what shape the rug is because the Gilmore Girls style is all about being eclectic. I think that this in particular adds to the star's hollow appearance because so many of these patterned carpets can be seen throughout the show. In Lorelai's house, at the inn, at Emily and Richard's, Rory's dorm room and even Luke's apartment has some rugs, so make sure to add some intricate rugs to your interior. Of course, a major part of decorating sets and giving them such character is by including unique and interesting furniture. And some of my favourite pieces on the show are some of the chairs that they decided to use. There's the wooden rocking chair in Lorelai's living room, which, albeit, doesn't exactly make that much of an appearance, but it definitely creates a homey feel to the space. Another piece of seating that is kind of iconic is the living room sofa, where all of the movie night takeaways take place. A very traditional beige sofa that would work in any home, but if you're looking for some more spice, the sofa gets changed to this striped pattern in the revival, which definitely stands out in the scheme. If that's too much for you maybe, but the beige sofa is a little boring, then the simple addition of a striped armchair will work perfectly in your space. The last bit of seating that I really love on the show are these green bamboo chairs at the inn. I mean, come on, they're just so much fun. 
I can't really tell you why these chairs were chosen, but they do add joy to the dining room. And for me, they are actually the only item that signifies the dragonfly's interior that has stuck in my memory. You could replicate this by finding the exact same, or buying neutral chairs and DIYing them yourself, or just sticking with a light toned option to make your scheme more modern. Now it definitely would not be accurate if we talked about Gilmore Girls style without discussing antiques. You're going to want to include as many as possible in order to create that Gilmore Girls look, a home that Mrs. Kim herself would be proud of. Kim's Antiques, we can assume, is the main home decor shop, if not the only home decor shop in the town that the residents of Stars Hollow shop at to dress their homes. Two pieces that I love are Rory's bed frame, which is a dark wood spool turned bed for those of you who were also wowed by its craftsmanship. The other is her dresser and mirror, which I believe she mentions by saying she wanted to create a French revival look. Now this is a great find because it doesn't necessarily need to be an antique, but simply a dresser that's not ultra modern and has an arched mirror. I would recommend looking for shabby chic dresser and mirror combinations to get a similar feel. Now my favourite hands down piece of furniture is something we don't actually get to see a lot and it's the enclosed bookcase at the Dragonfly Inn's library. I think that the bookcase has a lovely country feel and it kind of reminds me of a chicken hutch because of the mesh doors. I think that the combination of the slightly shorter bookcase and these pictures above makes for such a sweet eclectic space and this whole combination would really create the feeling of the Dragonfly in your home. Of course, if we're going to pretend that the studio lights aren't there and they're not lighting up the show, which other lights are actually there? The kitschy table lamps. These elements put so much personality and quirkiness into the set. Some of my favourites to emulate are floral lamps and of course glass Tiffany lamps, this one being my favourite. And if you're feeling really extra, you can of course pop the monkey lamp in there as well. I think that a lot of the houses on the show are very eclectic and very much are made up of knickknacks and different styles. And because of this, the home decor has no boundaries here. My only piece of advice is to look for antique objects like the sewing machine at Lorelei's, things that have dark accents, and just chintz in general. It may seem strange, but this all adds to the eclectic interior style. Look at places like thrift stores or charity shops as we call them here in the UK, vintage shops and online at Etsy to find really unique pieces. And of course, I feel like this kind of goes without saying, but the only home decor item you really need is a coffee machine. We all know that with Gilmore Girls, it's also filmed outside a lot of the time and we can use our own gardens to become part of the design too. Of course you could build a gazebo for the ultimate Stars Hollow at home experience, or maybe a vegetable garden that rivals Jackson's. Truth be told, I haven't really talked about Emily and Rich's home and I think that's because I always thought it was kind of austere, you know, with the comedic sized dining table or the large portraits everywhere. Maybe it's a bit too palatial for me and personally, I just don't get cozy vibes from their home. But one thing I have always loved with their house is the floral arrangements. Whether they're by the main door, the dining table or anywhere else scattered around the house, the large elaborate designs are so pretty and elegant.
Like I said at the beginning of the video, autumn is an integral part of the town, it's in its DNA. So I really do think decorating for fall would only feel right. Pumpkins, fall garlands, wreaths, hay bales and potted chrysanthemums are sure to turn your back garden into Star's Hollow Town Square. I quickly wanted to mention a few pieces of artwork that I think you can agree we always see throughout the series. Gallery walls, floral and bird art, the vintage map on Rory's wall and the memorable quilt. Just a few artwork ideas that I feel are the epitome of Gilmore Girls home decor. What's your favourite Gilmore Girls episode? Mine's called We've Got Magic To Do and you guys know the one I'm talking about. Please leave me a like or an emoji down below to let me know that you enjoyed the video and it actually really helps to grow our channel. If you love interior design, home decor and all that creative stuff, feel free to subscribe or join us on Patreon. But for today, that's it guys and I will see you in the next video. Bye.